I am Judy Shear Waters. I am freelance, uh, freelance writer, editor, and author of 19 books. They run the gamut of, I started with memoir. I, that's my first love. I love memoir. I love teaching memoir. Um, and I just started a YouTube channel um, based on memoir writing. So, um, so that's kind of fun and new for me. But I also have taken a side uh, like a little rabbit trail here and I've done some low content books, um, puzzle books, activity books, coloring, journals, um, sermon notes, things like that. So we're going to actually be publishing one of these books that I kind of put together today. They're very easy to put together, very easy to publish. And uh, so we're going to do that today. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to be looking at publishing your book free of charge. You are not going to pay one penny to get a book up on Amazon. So here we go. First of all, you have to write a great book. Great characters, great plot, great theme, great setting, a genuine point of view that doesn't do a lot of head hopping. Or you could do a low content book too. And that's what we're going to do tonight. So what about an editor? Yes, I do like paid editors because I make some money doing editing. But if you are on a shoestring, as I was when I started, uh, your critique partner is your very best first time go-to person. And I do have to put a plug in here for Hill Country Christian Writers. We meet every Monday night on Zoom now through the Mammon Public Library. Um, if you'd like to put your name in the chat or whatever, your email, I'll contact you. We meet at six o'clock from six to 7.30 on Zoom and we critique each other's pieces. Celeste is a member of that group there too. So um, anyway, uh, also a proofreader uh, and it will, there are a lot of different ways to get a proofreader through Goodreads. We're going to go into that in just a few minutes. Um, content editor. Now this content editor, copy editor, line editor, you'll pay for those. So the first line of defense is your critique partner. However, when you think about a critique partner and when you're doing a full-fledged book, uh, your critique partner will, as in Hill Country Christian Writers, we bring up to 2,500 words a night and that's it. So it could be the critique could be a little disjointed. It's not like somebody, an editor sitting down, reading your whole book, looking for uh, problems in transition from one chapter to the other. But get started there. That's a good place to start. Um, next thing is to sign up for LastPass. You know, I want to do, I want to show you my, um, I'm going to do this. LastPass is, um, all right, there's LastPass. And when you go into LastPass, this is going to keep all of your, all of your um, passwords, even if you aren't writing. Here's all of my passwords I would ever want. Um, lots and lots of websites. You're gonna be getting into websites and all. Um, so if I wanna to go to Goodreads, I just look, uh, I can just put in Goodreads up here. Let's just trying to make your life easy. And this is all free. LastPass is free. It's the last, um, last password you ever have to remember. Go to Goodreads, you launch it and voila, there I am. There's my Goodreads. And while we're here, we're going to talk about your community. So sign up for Goodreads. It's free. Look at your community and groups. And here's where you get beta readers. A beta reader is a a free reader. They just love to read. And they, uh, a lot of times they're in certain genres. So when I click on beta reader um, here, all right, so here's general and how to use a site. Here's writing advice and discussion. Then authors seeking free betas. So here, um, we'll just click on this one. Here's an author. Um, blurb is below, please comment. She tells what her book is about and she's looking for a free beta reader. Because if you are a memoir writer, you don't want a beta reader who loves uh, fantasy or who is used to doing thriller novels. You want someone who's used to reading your type of genre. 
So there are lots of different ones here. You just have to scan through them and you could, uh, but I did pay for a couple of these. There are sites, if you go into community again, there are different sites that you pay, like a proofreader you can pay. And I think the most I ever paid was like $7. And what they do now, they're not going to check your grammar or, um, or constant. Sometimes they'll say you used the same word over and over and over, you know, at times, or um, what they'll pick up on is whether there's a wonky transition between chapter two and three, or you lost me, or there between here and there. Or they might say, um, at the beginning of chapter four, she had a red dress on, but at the bottom of that, of that first page, uh, you mentioned the blue lace on her blue dress or something like that, you know, where some of that is. So beta readers are really good for that. Okay, so now we are going back that over. All right, so password, or yeah, last pass. All right, um, Goodreads, I mentioned that Goodreads account, your beta reader, give your genre, simple idea of what your book is. Do not ask friends and family because they don't want to hurt your feelings. So they are usually not the best um, critique partner to have. Uh, or sometimes they'll be too and they'll want to tear you apart too much and say, who's going to read it? You know, so you want some encouragement, but you want some good critique. You don't want the warm fuzzies. I call them warm fuzzies. Warm fuzzies that really make us feel good, but really will not further our, um, our writing career along as well. All right. So write great metadata. Okay. So. You should have a short description, a long description, your author bio, keywords, and you can get, I use Publisher Rocket, but that's a paid service. I think it runs, it's a one-time fee of maybe $86, something like that for life. Um, but there's also keywords, AMZ is Amazon, um, and then there are keywords everywhere. And those are free, free of charge, because keywords are, you know, when you go to search on your URL, you search for, say you're looking for, um, I don't know, uh, makeup, cosmetics. You're looking for a new eyeshadow. You put in eyeshadow and all these links show up. All right, that's what you, you want to know what keywords to use when you upload your book. We're going to get into that in just a minute. Who's your audience? Um, you know, is it children two to four? Uh, is it baby boomers? What my genre would be more like? Do you already have reviews? Sometimes if you have a critique partner or a beta reader, um, and you can ask a beta reader and they can turn you down, you know, but you say, could you give me an honest review? Now with a beta reader, if they give you that honest review and you don't like what they said, you don't have to use it. But reviews are really good when you go to put your description up on Amazon and categories up to 10, and we're going to be talking about that in a minute. Facebook author page. So let's take a look at um, mine. Here's my Facebook author page, and it's free of charge. I know you have to have a personal page first, um, and then you can create your author page. So on your author page, you can put contact information. You can um, be unashamedly uh, bold in advertising your own books. Uh, that's fine. You don't want to advertise your books. You don't want to say, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. That's not the purpose of an author page. The purpose of an author page is to let your people, the people who would normally buy your books, it's to let them know that um, you have a new book out. So here we are. Um, I'm sorry, my camera's over here. I know my pages are over here, so it's a little wonky. Um, I also have like an unboxing video that I put up there. Here's one of my Christmas books. Um, here's another one where I interviewed Kathy Luthringer. She's one from our, um, our critique group. Um, so in different, there's another book. I even put up a, another blog that is memoir based, a friend of mine uh, from Canada. So lots of different things you can do with your author Facebook page, okay? And that's free, free advertisement for you. Okay, 
select it as a business page um, and enter your author name as your full name or what you want to be known as. You know, it could be a pen name or it could be your real name um, and then author behind it. Upload your author picture. It's very easy, very easy. And then if you saw, I think I got rid of that page. Yeah. If you saw on mine, the top of mine is more memoir. The, there's a banner that goes on top and it was memoir related. Okay. Um, next, your author central page. So here's my author central page. Um, your author central page will have all of your, I'll go the home. All right, here's what people see when they first come in. Uh, yeah, they may not see this. This is behind the scenes. This is my books. All right, and then here it says view all books. There's all my books there. And then you can go, um, here's where you fill out your profile, where you can put your author bio, any pictures that you want up there, um, your books. And then at the end, you've got all these reports, like at the end of the year, it's very easy to look at taxes or uh, the profits that you made, the royalties, everything is there. So it's very important to have an author page. Another thing, when you go to look at a book on Amazon, um, they many times have that author page and will direct you over. In fact, let me, let me show you that while I'm here. We'll just go into Amazon and we'll pull up, um, and when we go in here, here's my latest book. And I'm not sure if it has it on yet. It's not connected it yet because it was just published last week, but usually it'll say, connect with the author and you can connect. Um, let me see, it might say it on one of these. Uh, that's not sponsored. Let me see down here. No, they don't have an author page. They should, but they don't, but it would say that. Okay, so that's the author page. So you go to, um, what is it? Uh, yeah, author, it's author.amazon.com and set up your author page. Upload your picture. It's very easy. Here's you edit your profile so you can just upload any kind of pictures. And if you have a website, it's a, it's it's good if you have a website or a blog. You can um, have it connected to this. So every time you put up a new blog, it will go on this too. And the people who are buying your books or just looking at your books may want to come take a look at other things that you do before they purchase your book. So who knew that was there? All right, so we will go back. Um, yeah, you can put a notice of a book launch coming up there. Uh, your book trailer, I have my book trailer on there, book reviews, okay, all of those things. Then, all right, we're going to set up a KDP account. This is where it gets fun. And I want to, um, this is driving me crazy doing two different, um, Bethany, I want to change screens. I'm going to stop sharing and then I will share this other screen. I'd rather okay. look more in my... Um, Let me know if you need help on it. I probably do. <laughs> All right, screen two, because my, yeah, I'm real awkward. To, okay, here we go, here we go. All right, let me put that off to the side. Did I mute myself? No, yeah. we can hear you. Okay, all right. So here's your KDP. Uh, you're going into Amazon. Um, uh, you're gonna call up, up this here, kdp.amazon.com. That's where you go, okay? And then when you get in there, <coughs> excuse me, you'll log in just as you normally do as you log into Amazon. Um, in fact, let me go out again and see if this will. Um, okay, so you sign in. And, okay, so it didn't ask for my login. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it asks for a cell phone uh, for them to verify that it's you. But whatever your password is to purchase items on Amazon, that's what you're going to use and your email, you use the same email and all right, 
So we are going to do, we're not going to do an ebook because I'm doing a low content book tonight and you can't do ebooks with low content. So we're going to do a brand new paperback. Let's do this. This will be fun. So we're talking about metadata. I'm going to put my metadata up here too, and I will make that small. And I'm going to move them up there. Here's my metadata. All right, so I'm gonna make my KDP small too, so I can try to get them on the same page. Ah, it's not working. Okay. Best late plans of mice and men, here we go. Ah, hold on, hold on there, here we go. All right, so language is going to be English, your book title. Here's my metadata. Metadata is everything you have created prior to this, so you don't have to be taking half an hour to go off and take a look at something else. Now, what I did here, um, <clears throat> I have three other hiking uh, log books up that are also journals, but I went into uh, Amazon for keywords and I went into my um, publisher rocket that's a paid thing but you don't you definitely don't have to have that but it looks like this hiking logbook journal is very um, popular it's a title that people put into the Amazon search to search for this type of book so then I looked for a subtitle because your subtitle should be rich with keywords. What are people going to be looking for if they're hikers uh, and they love to write? You know, they may be looking for, uh, you know, these types of things are popular. Um, what are they going to be putting into that search bar in Amazon that would lead them to the product that they want? So I looked this up and journal with writing prompts. Uh, every month, 1,896 people search those search that phrase. This what I wanted to do was inspirational quotes for the trail, and only 264 people search Amazon with quotes. There's that. Look at this one: journal with prompts for women. Is oh, that's not the number. The number 10,826 goes with just with prompts. So. I don't especially care for that. Um, it just doesn't, I don't know. I don't care for it, but it draws in more traffic. So I think that's what I'm going to use. That's my subtitle, okay? Once you publish a book, you, can't, you can revise the interior. You can revise the cover as many times as you want on Amazon, but you, um, you can't revise the title or the subtitle. Title and subtitle stay the same. Uh, they will never change. You can unpublish the book, but um, those type, because there will be an ASIN or an ISBN that's assigned to that title and subtitle. It's not a series. Uh, I don't need an, okay, so here's my, I'm going to put in my information like that, okay. And there are no other contributors. And then my description. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my metadata that I've worked on. Metadata should be put in with, um, and don't let this throw you, it's not that hard. If I can understand it, anyone can. I'm 71 years old. And so <laughs> if I can learn this, it's very easy. This is uh, HTML talk uh, that will boost the attention so we just copy and paste that in here. All right, so when we look at this metadata, when you go to Amazon and you're looking for a book and you find uh, one and you look at the description, you're reading the description. Okay, the books where there's bold print, it's because there's, met, there's HTML. So this H3 is larger print and the B means bold. If you just print, if you just put a regular description in with no HTML, there's nothing bolded in there. There's nothing a bigger size there. You know, it's a boring type of description. So here you begin your H, your hot, big 
title and here's the lower, you know, where you close it off. And then I use, instead of bullet points, I use this HTML. And I think this one is for a mountain, you know, little icons that make it a little more interesting. And I'll show you on one of my other books what that what that's all about. So that's metadata in or your description in um, uh, in the HTML. Okay, I put down I own the copyright of everything. Okay, and now here's my keywords. Now this is important because these are words that people look for or they put in that search bar um, to get the product they want. So here I went, I did some scanning, hiking gifts for couples. Now it could be, it's a journal, but it could be there's 5,407 people or searches for it. So I'm gonna paste that in there. Here's hiking gifts. You want to buy a hiker in your life a gift? There's over 3,000 people or searches. I don't know. It could be the same people. All right. That's going to go there. Uh, hiking uh, gifts for hikers. Same idea, but we've got even, we've got some more, 12, copy. So you need seven. You can put in whatever words you want here, but it's always good to research it. Um, you could say for women, it's not, this book is not going to be specifically for women, but it could be, you know, so um, because it's going to have some quotes in it. And then over here, let me see, what didn't I put in there? Hiking long, we did that one, this one, that one. Um, let's just, this is a real popular one. I didn't put down the number on here, but it's really a wonky type of keyword. <clears throat> um, I wouldn't, if I were looking for a hiking log book, I wouldn't put in all those words in the search bar, but that one is actually the most popular of all. Um, so I can't remember now, I went all over. So what didn't I put in here? <clears throat> Trail log book that has 600. Well, here's some more down here. Well, they're not as much. So we'll do this one. Paste one more. Um, Mm, I'm not sure about these with prompts. We'll do this one. I'm not sure what this one is. I didn't put that number, but these were the ones with the most number of searches. Okay, so where to go from here? Next, we're going to choose our categories. Okay, Amazon says you can choose up to two categories. Um, and then after it's published, you can go into contact Amazon. You go all the way to the bottom of the screen. Uh, for example, let me show you. You can go down here in the small print is contact us. You click on that and I would click on that top one. I want to update my Amazon categories. And then I just give them the ASIN or the ISBN and I add the categories. Please add this to my listing. Um, I can either call them or email them with this. So um, <clears throat> that's really neat. I mean, I do a lot of that. Okay, let's go back. So right now we're gonna do two, we're gonna choose just two. All right, it's nonfiction. Oh man, did I, uh, let me see if I can remember. All right, we can do health and fitness. We could put it under exercise, that's one. We could put it in, for now we can, we can always change these. So just to save time, I'm gonna put it under healthy living, okay? All right, I can only do two here, but like I said, I can add. Now it's not large print. If it's more than 14 point uh, font, then you can mark that. And I do have several that are large print. I have a memoir that's large print and several, I think all my activity books are large print. Does this contain language or situations that are not suitable for 18 years or younger? No, all right. It doesn't. All right, we're gonna save that and watch that little gray button go. Save successful, we go on. Now, once you assign an ISBN to a book, again, that's it's at this point that you can't change your title or your subtitle, okay? Because it will always be connected to this. As I said, you can unpublish it and publish a new one, the same thing under a different title if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and have them assign an ISBN for me. 
Uh, pros and cons to this. You can purchase your own ISBN from Bowker. Go to bowker.com uh, or myidentifiers.com. Be very careful where you go, either one of those two websites, because they'll try to charge you a whole lot more. What's, you, an, what's an average price for an ISBN number? Okay. Um, <laughs> they run $125 for one. Or if you buy a package of 10, um, I think it's like 195 And it's it's smart to do 10 because, you know, I'm gonna, now I've got to bring you people over here so I can see you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's because you need, you'll need one for, if you're going to do a hardback, you'll need a different one for a paperback. You'll need a different one for an audio book. You don't need one for an ebook because ebooks are not sold at stores. So, but for one title, you may need three different, um, three different ISBNs. Okay. Um, also, with your own ISBN, you can take it anywhere. You can take it to uh, digi uh, draft to digital that has a lot of different um, places where they distribute your book. You can take it to Barnes and Nobles online. You can take it all over um, with the same ISBN. When you use the Amazon ISBN, it can only be sold on Amazon, all right? But it can be sold worldwide on Amazon. Or, I mean, it's all over. And you know they have a huge corner of the market. But here's where you would put in, use my own ISBN if you want to use your own, okay? Um, I think when I had my publishing company, I um, bought, I, it was, the price was 500 for $1,000. So um, we did that. All right, so publication date, leave that blank. It will just be, um, it'll be put in there according to when you get it up there, okay. Mine is going to be black and white interior with white paper. That means this is your interior, okay? It's a different size. I'm using a five by eight. I use five by eight for my hiking books because they fit better into a backpack rather than a six by nine. I think this is a five by eight. You know, it's a little bit smaller than yours. Yeah, here's a, here's a six by nine and here's the five by eight, so I think, yeah. Five by eight. It's a little bit smaller, but it fits into the back pot, backpack a lot better. Bleed. Okay, the difference here is bleed. All right, this is this is no bleed. Okay, um, because your lines don't go all the way to the end of the page. Bleed is when you have lines or coloring that goes all the way to the end of the page. All right. Um, let me see. I've got a couple books here, but. No, that's not a good example. So anyway, you get it. So this is going, but I always do bleed to cover it. If I have something that goes outside of the lines, I just I just put bleed. <clears throat> My interiors are always in PDF. You have to have PDF anyway. All right, so we've got our dimensions. We've got our bleed. And then I like glossy, but a couple of my memoirs I did in matte. Matte is a really nice, I think it's a more of an elegant, uh, type cover but when you're talking about like this one is you know I just like the glossy just regular journals uh, but that's it, there's no you know this is free there's no price difference in the regardless okay now we're getting to upload the backpack or the backpack the paperback I'll go into my uh, what, where'd I put it I think it was in here and I called it binder one. Let me see if I can find it. I think that's where I put it today. I just, see, I, I got quotes off of the internet and you have to make sure if you use any quotes, you have to make sure that they are free for commercial use. You can use any quote that is more than 75 years old. So anything from Henry David Thoreau, uh, Mark Twain, uh, any of those, or you can go in and just make sure that it's free for commercial use. Okay, I put this, I think this is under my other section. I think it, we'll see if it's here. Mm, yep, binder one, here we go. All right, so we're going to, it's in a PDF. It's all put together. 
actually it's not complete yet. I don't have a title page in it yet or this log book belongs to, but I just kind of threw it together today. Okay. And this is something I should have, we should have done before we even started here. If you want to do a cover within KDP, you're able to do it here. I have never done that. Um, I'm going to upload a cover I already have, but I really need to go to Book Brush. Now, Book Brush is free. I love, love, love Book Brush. I am not artistic at all, not at all. But this is, you know, Awesome. I mean, I, I actually do pay for the plus, I think it's $69 a year, something like that, which is a bonus. And I really don't use anything but the cover creator. You can, you can make um, all different, you can do instant mockups, you can do ads for Facebook, ads for Instagram, ads for all different websites, you know, your YouTube, they have all these different awesome things that you can do there if you want to pay more money. I, I pay the money, but I don't use anything but the cover creator. So here's my cover creator. I'm gonna move your little faces again. Okay, we're gonna do size, the print. It's a print book. I'm doing a five by eight. This is so easy, so easy. Um, it's going to be white on the inside because seriously, the width, or that the thickness of paper is different between the white paper and the cream paper. That's why it makes a difference. So it'll make a difference in your spine, how big your spine is. I always keep my books, my log books or my journals at uh, 108 pages or less because I have a motive here. Um, 108 pages or less will cost you at the author price uh, $2.15. Anything over that, you're going to go up to $2.35, $2.45, whatever. All right. So I try to keep, and I figure if I'm doing a journal, that will give at least a year's worth of spread. So I'd have 52 spreads, uh, a right page and a left page, 52 spreads for a year. That's one week. So you can have whatever you want on the left and then place for a journal, whatever. Um, so, and then your other four pages would be a title page, uh, how to use this journal or whatever you want. But I always use 108. Okay, so I'm gonna submit that size. And then I go into the template. And this is something I just made this afternoon. Um, this is one. Uh, my ponderings on the hiking trail. Now, see, that's not the title I put in. So I couldn't use that. The title you put in your KDP information has to be that title on your front book, on the front of your book, or they're going to reject it. And same thing with your subtitle. Subtitle does not have to be on the front of your book, but... Um, they do check on your title, make sure the titles. So what I did with this, I uploaded uh, just a random Henry Thoreau uh, quote on the back and this, okay, let me show you how I did this. Let me get back up here again. I will try to delete this. How do I delete that? Um, I got to get rid of these again. Oops, that's not it. Those. All right, I've got to go out again. I'm going to leave and come back in because I, okay, so let's do it again. Size, we're going to go print. Um, we're going to do our five by eight. Uh, we're going to do white. We're going to do the 108. And then when we go into templates, we're going to look for, no, we're going to do the background. We're going to search backgrounds. Now you could have, um, uh, images, uh, where's my background? Search. This is not an ad. Cover creator. What am I doing here? Five by eight. Got that right. Okay. We submitted that. We're good. Add your cover. Here we are. Add your cover. So front cover. It, you could have a picture from your file that you want, um, or you could... Where's my organized? 
you can uh, why is that create fold no huh this is not background here we go here we go all right we're going to search here we go background we want to get a background first this comes from pixabay where you have a million free images and say we want something on nature for our background so we put that in and here's all these things now if it has this mark up here it means it's too small for the size that you're wanting um, or it just won't stretch so we could use um, that one we can't use that one we could use something like this okay so that's kind of a hiking picture so then from here all right let's use that here's text um, we're going to add a new text box. There's a text box. And in the text box, we're going to say, oh, what was our story? What was our title? I forgot what our title was now. Um, I should go to metadata, but hiking logbook journal. Very simple. So we have hiking logbook journal. Oops. Okay. And we're going to edit this. We'll edit. And here's a whole lot of different fonts you can use. There's that. Um, we'll want to capitalize the H. Um, this might be good. How come it? I that was not originally in my um in here i had to upload that and you have to make sure that your fonts are good for commercial use the some of those fonts you have to pay for them you can get in trouble if you're using fonts that are not all right i'm going to make it black judy yes uh, with the images, I know when you were doing the search on images and mm -hmm. you pulled up, okay, well, do they have uh, any, I know they're available for you to use, but do they have a number of times that they can be used? No way. Say that again. Okay, so they're free images that you can upload. Oh, yeah. Is there like a restriction on the number of times that an image can be used on this website? No. No? Mm -mm. No, not at all, except you want to make sure you don't use the same image, you know, for- Right. A, a but I mean, for someone else that, I guess they would remove it if that was a problem, huh? Um, you mean using Pixabay pictures? Well, uh, from from this uh, cover creator that you're using, yeah. The, when you went when you went to images, I saw on the search bar it said can choose over um, like a thousand or a million free images. Right. And I guess I was wondering were there any restrictions on like there would be on um, commercial use. No, okay. no, no. Um, and then you just need to, uh, usually Pixabay is the best place to go to see if they're free for commercial use. Um, and I'll, I'll show you, you know what, I'll show you that. Um, all right, we're just gonna say this is done because we're running out of time. So we're gonna save it as a template <clears throat> and I'll show you where that comes in, Celeste. Um, Okay, so I'm going to download it. And when we go to download, uh, I like to download in a PDF. It doesn't take long at all to do this. And it will give us an opportunity to recheck and make sure, okay, it says here, I understand I'm responsible for checking the licensing of all images. And it has here background image licensing. So you click on that and it takes you to Pixabay and it'll say here, free for commercial use, no attribution required, okay? So some of them will say attribution required. That means you'll have to put it somewhere inside your book that, you know, so-and-so, you know, let me use this, all right? But this is free for commercial use. So that's good. That is good. So um, there's 
tons on Pixabay. I love Pixabay. All right, so we're going to just check that. We're going to download to save it to the computer. It takes a few seconds here while we're, oh, I didn't take long at all. Sometimes it takes long. All right, so here it is. It's very plain. I'll go back and change it again. I'm not sure I even like it, but for that, I probably should have used that other one that I already did. Um, and I'm going to save it under my Dropbox again, under hiking, under low con, this is low content books. And we'll put it under my hiking quotes here. Okay, right there. <clears throat> so now we're gonna go back to our KDP and into uh, this is the one we're working on right here. Continue setup. And we are in this page. I know I'm going really fast, but, um, you know, if you have any questions, contact me. I'll be happy to help you. All right, so we uploaded the binder uh, or the inside. Here's where we're going to upload the cover creator. Oh man, I didn't do that wrong. I am sorry. I'm not doing that. <laughs> what am I doing? We are doing, oh my goodness. I'm trying to go faster than what my fingers will do or maybe my fingers are going too fast. I don't know. All right, let's do that again. We are not using the KDP cover creator. We are going on to, here, upload a cover you already have. Upload your cover file. It says, notice it says um, PDF only, or is it, yeah, PDF only. So you're going to upload that cover file. It's under here somewhere. Boom, right there it is. Okay. So we're going to let this, and this can take uh, up to an hour. It says processing file, processing file. So while we wait for that, um, we are going to, uh, let me see my, see if I can get my PowerPoint. Well, we don't need PowerPoint. The other thing is Ingram Sparks. So let's just talk and you can ask me questions now while we're waiting for that to um, process. Ingram Sparks is another site, um, just ingramsparks.com. It's where you can do hardbacks, but uh, Lulu has also recently uh, cleaned up their reputation. They have beautiful hardbacks now and they have, um, a little less than what Ingram is. Ingram is kind of the standard for the industry still, but um, both of them have more dimensions, more book sizes than what Amazon offers. So you may want um, for a children's book, you may want it to be horizontal, um, you know, like an 11 by eight, 11 long, uh, eight, you know, width, so, um, or height. But you can't do that on Amazon. You can only do that on um, on Ingram or Lulu. Now, I have heard some rumors, I guess, on different uh, forms that I'm I'm on a lot that Amazon is now in beta testing for hardcovers. So that would be really huge if they came out with something like that. But Ingram Spark, uh, when you go in, set up an account, it's very easy. It's not totally free. Every upload is $49, except they have come out with a lot of free codes lately. And I know in July, last July, they had a free code from July until the end of the year. So all you had to do is put that code in and that was free. However, any revisions were $25 each. So if you want to make any little tiny revision to your book, Every time you upload it again, it hits you with $25. So that is not free. Um, I can't tell you to go there because it's not free. And tonight we're talking about free. Um, but they really do have a great product. Okay, so, all right, we're still processing. Let me see what else. Um, 
the other thing with Ingram Sparks is that because it's hardcover and because you, okay, you don't have to use your, your own ISBN there. You can get a free one now that just started last year. But if you have your own ISBN, you would be able to get your books into bookstores. Uh, also, but <laughs> the other caveat is you have to give up 55% of your royalties in order for a Barnes and Nobles to purchase a number of books. And then you have to be willing to take those back if they don't sell. Um, I have found in independent books that I have my books in three indie book bookstores, uh, two in Pennsylvania and one here now. But uh, you can get them in, just go talk with the uh, Twig downtown. They'll take them in sometimes, but uh, half price books will uh, sometimes take in uh, independent uh, books. And what you do is you just buy a certain number, buy five of them off of Amazon uh, at your author discount and then um, take them in, you know, talk with the people, get to know, build a relationship with the manager and get them in an independent bookstore. Okay, this is uploaded. See, that was easy, very easy. We're going to launch our previewer. <clears throat> We're going to see what the, this is our, and there's going to be mistakes because I was so fast in trying to do this probably. Okay, so here's where you would look for a list of rejections. They're, they don't have any. Woo, that's interesting. All right, so it says just make sure that everything is right. But usually if you have anything here, this is where you would look for a rejection, why they might reject it. So you start here and you start looking. All right, so now I know right away this is wrong. I'm going to have to go back and do it because I don't want to start with the journal page. I want to start with the log page. This is the log where you log in you know, the name of the trail, the route, the start time, end time, and then here's the quote. So I want on every left-hand page, I want a place to log in their hiking information. Every right-hand page is going to be the quote and lines to write. So I would go through each and every, I would just keep going, scrolling through this, make sure it's right. If when I find, when I'm satisfied with it, then I go down here and approve. But I'm not going to approve because I see there's some problems and I don't have my title page in and I don't have the page in yet for this book belongs to. Uh, or I might wanna put another page in about how to use this, you know, and how to, you know, you know, find a good rock to sit on and I might do some other flowery language, you know, in there. Pull up a rock and spend some time on the trail and write your thought, write to your prompts, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm going to exit the previewer instead of approving it. And I'm right back here. Oh, and then my next one. Okay, I can't go to the next page, but what I'm going to do is, so I'm, I'm gonna go out and take you into one of my other books just to show you. Here's a fun one I just did. Uh, I'm gonna take you to that third page just so you can see paperback rights and pricing. This is once you've approved it, you'll be sent to this page. You want it to be sent to all territories. You want worldwide rights on everything. Um, in other words, you want it to be able to be sold in the UK and China. Well, it won't be sold in China. I mean, they don't, China doesn't allow that. Um, so, but other, it'll be sold in Australia or whatever. Here you set your price. This is kind of a fun thing to do. And when you get your book ready, you'll need to go into Amazon and check other books that are very similar to yours. Yours, if it's a memoir and you might put in, you know, it's just put in memoir in the bar and see what other memoir books are out there and how much they charge. Um, but this was a Mexican train domino score book. Um, and I, I'm charging $6.99. This tells me here, I'm gonna make a $1.81 royalty on every book sold. Now, if I want to up the price, I can at any time. I can go in here it'll, and now I get $3. Or I may wanna make it, uh, see, it says the minimum price is $3.98. So I may want to 
just see what it does at $5.99. All right, $1.21. So you can change your pricing at any time. Okay, and then down here, when you're happy with it all, you publish your paperback book. Okay, I want to take you in real quick. Ugh. No, I don't want to do that. I can't do that. I was going to take you back into Amazon and show you. I'm, yes, I will. Um, but I really wanted to have time for you guys to ask questions. Um, let me just pick up any one of these. Uh, we'll go into books. Uh, let's do memoir. Nope, let's spell it right. See, I've got AMZ keywords. So this is free. You go into AMZ keywords. I'm starting to put in memoir and you see everything that comes up for memoir. These are keywords you can be using um, that would memoir writing, memoir bestsellers, memoir journal, all keywords. All right, we're going to go in here. Okay, so this is sponsored. I don't ever click on something that's sponsored because that means the author is paying for an ad. And every time you click on it, it costs that author money. So I'll go down below to something that's not sponsored. Here's where silence ends. And what you do is you scroll down to the bottom and you look at their metadata. Here's meta, oh, they haven't, this was just published, or no wait. It's not published yet. It's to be published March 22nd of 20. So there's nothing down here yet. You can't really compare to that one. Um, let's see, we'll try one more that's not, um, okay, let's try this one. Mm, can't do that one, I don't know why. Sponsored, sponsored, a memoir to death. Let's try that one. Okay, this is January 15th, this is just on. So see right now, it's at 289,371 in books. That's their ranking, but they have just published. These are their categories they're in. Okay. And so when you look for memoir and you want something that's similar to your book, look down here. Fifth, this one has 50 pages. All right. Yours is, might be longer. Like mine is 246, something like that, my first one. So you want to see something that's similar. And then you look up here and say, okay, they're charging paperback, $19.99. That's ridiculous. That's a lot. And I would take a look inside here and see why is this so, no, that's not, that doesn't look like $19.99. So uh, bless them and I hope them, I wish them well, but um, maybe family and friends will buy it, but I'm not sure. Okay, so anyway, that's it. I just wanted to give you an idea of what to look for. Um, 